is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at the Pantech Discover, available on AT&T. It's a fairly high-end Android smartphone, but it's only $49 on contract. You get a big 4.8-inch display, dual-core 1.5 gigahertz processor, and actually a stylish design, one of the first really stylish-looking Pantech phones on the market. We're going to look at it now. So this is the Pantech Discover, available now on AT&T. And Pantech, well, they've been known for making budget phones at budget prices that didn't generally have top specs or stylish looks. Well, here's the first one that breaks that mold. This is definitely a fairly high spec phone and it's actually a very good looking phone too. Big 4.8 inch LCD display right here, 1280 by 720 pixels. Uh, not the most saturated and, and high contrast display I've seen, but certainly not bad. Not a nasty TN panel or anything like that. So I won't complain too, too much about it. Of course, it's not up to the level of the HTC One X and One X Plus or the iPhone 5, but it's a reasonably nice display. Take a look around, you can see we have soft buttons down here instead of having capacitive buttons. So it does use a little of your screen real estate up, but that is in the spirit of pure Google Android operating system. But well, Pantech has customized that, and we'll get into that. If you look around the phone, nice kind of curve to it there. We've got the contrasting chromy sides on it, and a, a pleasing curve on the back, and that makes room up top for the 12.6 megapixel camera, something you really don't expect to see on a $49.99 phone with contract. Little LED flash down here, relatively tolerable AT&T logo. It has a textured plastic finish. There's like a little cross hatching on it, so it's fairly grippy. Not bad looking at all. Up top here, ringed in chrome, we have our 3.5 millimeter audio jack. That's our power button right there. This little slot is where you grab it to remove the back. Though this is a thin phone, the back is removable. We'll take a look at the insides in a minute. And notice here, these big ears, stereo speakers, side firing, pretty big, and pretty unusual design there, and they do make some pretty good sound. And there's our other ear on this side, and here's our volume controls. And on the bottom, as you'd expect, there's the micro USB connector for charging and syncing the phone. And we've pulled off the back cover, here it is, all by its own some. You can see you've got little contacts here, this does have NFC. Here's our micro SIM card slot, micro SD card slot, and the 2100 milliamp battery. For those of you who like to be able to swap in a spare battery, good times, you can do that here, obviously. Also, we like to see expandable storage. The phone has 16 gigs of internal storage, by the way, and a gig of RAM. And you can see Pantex standard ring style unlock screen. You can just drag these applications over to the center, so you just want to launch the web browser on waking up the phone. You can do that. And while we're looking at the web browser, this is the standard Android WebKit web browser. You can download Chrome if you want. Notice that big bar at the bottom that was there for a minute? It's kind of annoying, isn't it? Well, that's AT&T's little shortcut bar for social networking. And if you want to get rid of it, scroll to the top here so you can get to Settings. Go to Settings. Go to Advanced and uncheck Show Browser Bar. And that annoying little thing will go away. We really wish that Pantech wouldn't let AT&T muck with the built-in web browser so much, but hey, that is what it is, and they're not the only manufacturer who's done that. By the way, this does have an interesting feature here. We've got the web scrap. If you want to take a snapshot of a page, just choose that, and you can save it or share it socially if you want. The phone runs Android 4.04 Ice Cream Sandwich. Sorry, no jelly bean here. When you're paying 50 bucks on contract for a phone, something's got to give, right? Well, that's what's what's giving here. Will it ever get Jelly Bean? I don't know. Usually with Pantech phones, not so much. For the price, you're not, you're not going to get that extra development time that it costs to do that. In terms of responsiveness, this runs on a Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 dual-core 1.5 gigahertz CPU. That's pretty much the same CPU you see in a lot of higher-end Android phones, and it's very fast, very responsive. Benchmarks just as you, as you would expect it to. On the Quadrant benchmark, it scored 5,500, which is the same as all the other 1.5 GHz Qualcomm Snapdragon dual-core phones. Responsive here for pinch zooming, scrolling, no problem. We'll check out a little video playback and look at the uh, Teve Odyssey video review. And we're doing this over AT&T's 4G LTE network. So here it goes, it looks good. Speakers are pretty good. Pop it out to full screen, and this actually ships with Adobe Flash, something you just don't see very often anymore. 
And just so you can see for yourself in our listing of all installed programs, there's Adobe Flash 11.1. We did not put that on there. The phone came with it. So good times for you people who want Adobe Flash and don't want to deal with sideloading that plugin from Adobe's website. The phone has the usual three home screens here, selection of Pantech backgrounds. They have the AccuWeather widget here. They have their little quick application launcher bar right here. And if you tap on the little settings thing, you've got some more access to things like your widgets, your wallpaper, your themes, tips, stuff that's supposed to make it a little bit easier. I'm not a huge fan of Pantex UI changes, but that is what it is. It's not the worst thing in the world either. And this is what your applications look like. And you can create and edit your own groups right here. You can see I can edit that. And we have other options too. You can manage groups. You can hide stuff. You can change icons, go straight to the Play Store. So it's actually a reasonably powerful impl implementation. Pantech has a couple of their funny little applications on here, or not so funny, some that are useful. We've got the alarm clock on here. We have a pill reminder. For those of you who have to take medications, this phone will help you with your meds. Pantech puts their own music player on board. I don't find that offers anything that the Google Play Music application doesn't do for you anyway. And we've got Social Gallery, which is just for looking at images from your social networks. And Net Media here is for DLNA. You can use this over Wi-Fi or the Wi-Fi Direct to stream stuff from DLNA server. All the standard Google apps are on board as well. And we've got AT&T Navigator on here, AT&T Family Maps, Yellow Pages Mobile, the usual AT&T stuff. Also AT&T Account Management and their Wi-Fi Hotspot Finder. We also have Social World here, as you can see, for your Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn stuff. Or you can just download the Facebook, Twitter clients of your choice as well. So not too bad a software grouping there. I, again, the, the UI is not that intrusive, but they have customized it obviously to a certain extent. You also get a task manager right there, so you can manage any running applications as you see fit. And we've also got Think Free Office on board. This allows you to view, edit, and create MS Office documents, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. And you can see that you can get stuff from online, you can access your local documents, you can create new, and you can do all three kinds of file types. So pretty handy. And again, for a phone at this price, we're glad to see it. We've got a big on-screen dialer here with access to your call log and your favorite folks too. Voicemail, just to tap away, there's your phone book right there. Certainly easy to use, very friendly for those of us who can't see so well. Call quality on the phone is very good. Clear, incoming, and outgoing voice. Nice, sounds good on AT&T's network, certainly. And volume is average to slightly above average through the earpiece and works fine with Bluetooth headsets and car kits in our tests as well. For synthetic benchmarks, again, on Quadrant, it scored a 5,500 on to 9,734. Very respectable score. GL Benchmark 2.5, the Egypt 2.1 Classic test, it scored 50 frames per second, 28 frames per second off screen. And on SunSpider, it did 16.25, putting it in, you know, middle of the pack for SunSpider speeds. So how about the camera? 12.6 megapixel sounds pretty impressive. It takes very good outdoor shots, a little bit of white out outdoors, but nothing worse than the Samsung Galaxy S3 in that respect. Very sharp shots, fairly sharp, not too terribly over sharpened, a little bit over sharpened. And you can hear it making the little focusing sounds as it's working on its autofocus, and you can tap to focus if you want. Takes quick shots. You can disable that shutter sound if you want, by the way. And then we've got handy access to the pictures that we've taken right here. There it is. And a little film strip down below. Some of the shots that we've taken. Pretty good detail there, actually. And we'll zoom in so you can see. A lot of detail in the leaves here without looking too terribly artificial. It's nice stuff. And in terms of settings, we have basic flash control. You can switch between the 2 megapixel front camera, which for some reason they say only shoots VGA photos. Go figure, but it works fine for video chat. And you can access the full set of settings here so you can have basic control of your exposure, your flash, your timer, focus mode. And you can either go with tracking focus or touch focus, various effects color effects and more settings here. You can choose whether or not GPS is going to mark the location of these photos, whether or not you want a review screen, shutter sound on off, so basic settings there. Now when it comes to the video camera, it actually takes pretty nice 1080p video. Only caveat there is I've never seen a phone with worse stabilization issues. Now when we're filming something like the box, and we'll sh show you that in a minute, that's, you know, there's hardly any movement going on. It's not too bad, but here we're filming our cat not moving around a whole lot, nor was he. But you can see 
It's just a little jerky. And it's actually playing at a good frame rate. It's playing at 30 frames per second. It's just actually a little bit lack of image stabilization that causes some of that jerkiness. But if we play our little panning around on our sieve box. Now here we're perfectly still, so this is going to look fine. And that looks fairly that smooth like that, so keep a steady hand. Smoothly. And for size comparison, here we have the Nokia Lumia 920 in vivid red, the iPhone 5, here's our Pantech Discover right here, and the HTC One X Plus. So it gives you an idea, of course, the iPhone 5 is going to be the smallest guy, but it's about the same size as the other phones. The phone has NFC, dual band Wi-Fi, 802.11bgn, and Bluetooth 4.0, and as you would expect, of course, it has a GPS that works just fine with Google Maps and with AT&T Navigator. Battery life of the phone has been quite good for a fairly powerful phone. It has an adequate 2100 milliamp batteries, competitive with other phones that we had no trouble making through the day. That means 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. without running out of juice with a moderate amount of use. We've got push email turned on using the web browser, streaming a couple of videos, taking some photos using the office suite a little bit, that kind of thing. If you're going to be using the GPS a lot or gaming a lot, you, know, you, you might have to charge it earlier in the day, but it compares favorably to the HTC One X Plus and the One X because, well, especially with One X Plus, you've got that power-hungry Tegra 3 CPU going on, and also it lasts pretty well compared to my Samsung Galaxy Note 2. So for gaming, we have our usual friend, Dead Trigger here, a little 3D shoot 'em up that's fairly demanding. And so here we are. We've in our second wave in Dead Trigger, and I've got it in left-handed mode. If that looks backwards to you, that would be why. Plays just fine. Frame rate staying smooth. You won't get the Tegra 3 effects like water dripping or water puddling, but other than that, given how few Tegra 3 phones we have on the market, I'm not complaining. So that's Dead Trigger playing on the Pantech Discover. So for music, we have Google Play Music, we have the built-in music player. This is what the built-in music player looks like. Not the most exciting thing I've seen. You do get album cover art, and actually Google Play Music is a little bit louder than this, so the beginning of this song is pretty quiet. Nice stereo separation from the two speakers right over there. And for the sound in Google Play Music. Pretty nice sound for a phone. Not tinny. Nice stereo separation. Not bad. And now we're going to test 1080p playback using the built-in gallery application. Volume is at about three quarter right now. Again, it's not wildly loud, but the sound quality is nice on this. And it can handle 1080p video playback, no problem. Of course, that exceeds the screen resolution, but hey, just in case you want a DLNA or use an MHL adapter for video output, there it is. So that's the Pantech Discover. It's available now on AT&T. Again, it's only $49.99 on contract. Not a bad price for the phone that you get. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.